Hey guys, how you doing? This is Aaron uh, here on another episode of Southern Copper Chronicles. Today we're going to be talking about proofing and troubleshooting our proofings. All right. So when we talk about proofing, what are we talking about? We're talking about taking an alcohol, a spirit run that is higher proof than uh, really you'd want to drink, say 160, 170, and taking it down to 90, 100 proof. Me personally, I enjoy my alcohol uh, at around 90 to 100 proof that I make, especially if it's a grain alcohol, you know, an all grain, a whiskey, a bourbon. Um, I want to be able to, to taste it and sip on it instead of it just being a, a crazy burn. So today we're going to go into what it means to proof or dilute your alcohol. Uh, to make it ready to age and make it something that can be a really special product. All right, a few pieces of equipment that we're going to use to proof everything down. We're going to have our test tube, our proof and trails hydrometer, which is used for proofing a for getting the proof of a distilled spirit. Uh, remember, your proof and trails hydrometer will not work for wine. Or something you add sugar to it has to be something that doesn't have any sugar in it um, a, a finished distilled product okay I've got some mason jars here I've got some different water uh, we'll go into in a few minutes I've got about two gallons of rainbow corn oat and barley that is right around 170 proof uh, grain and raw sugar uh, I made a couple weeks ago and I've got a fish tank hydrometer that I use and then my handy dandy Pyrex measuring cup one question I know I'll get why the hydro or why the bubbler the Surveys out, I guess you could say. I've had some discussions with people from home distilling world all the way to uh, commercial distilleries. I have found that taking and aerating your finished product, this is all the hearts from a finished, finished product, bubbling it for 12 or 15 hours with medical grade tubing, um, a fish tank stone from a pet store it's going to take a product that is maybe a little bit rough it, uh, tasting has a little bit of a burn it's just going to smooth it down and people say well if you just do it right you don't need to do this well yes this was a very smooth product to begin with but I have found in my personal experience that taking and putting an aerator in it leaving it open to the atmosphere for 12 to 24 hours just makes it that much smoother and that much better. That's something you have to do. Just something I found works pretty well uh, to just take your product to the next level. Okay? So, how are we going to take this product I'm going to go ahead and test this so I can show you guys what we're working with here. Now this is distilled through five thumpers. It's a very efficient setup. So the alcohol content is pretty high. As you can see, I'm sitting at about somewhere about 85 proof or 70% alcohol by volume. Easy way to figure it out, your alcohol by volume, to figure your proof, take your alcohol by volume, multiply it times two, that's your alcohol by volume. Now I wanna get this down to my personal preference, which is about 95 proof, so I can put it on some uh, maple, I've got some maple, some oak, some pecan wood. I'm going to age it in some various uh, woods for a little while. I'll do a video on aging in, in the mason jars. 
uh, here in a, in a week or two. All right, so the math is pretty simple for what I'm doing. I want to take it from right around 85% alcohol by volume down to about 50. Or I want to take it from 175 down to around 100. So for all intents and purposes, all I need to do is cut it in half. All right, so I'm going to do 400 milliliters of 175 proof alcohol to 400 milliliters of water. And that's going to put me right around 95 to 100 proof. Easiest way to figure a proof if you're not sure how to proof it down, go in to Google and just type in alcohol dilution calculator, moonshine proofing calculator. It's going to come up. So if you have a quart of whatever proof alcohol you have, it's going to tell you exactly how much water to add to get to the proof you want. Easy way to cheat. You know, modern technology is great. Now there are a few other things to think about and consider you can't just add any old water to your finished alcohol and expect it to come out, you know, correctly. We have spent a whole lot of time on a mash, on the distilling process, you know, getting everything, so, so much time getting this right, we don't want to just make it subpar. Uh, when we decide to prove it down and age it. Your water is, is important during your mashing process when you're making a mash, but your water is critical when you get ready to proof your finished product down. If you use a city water to try and proof your finished product down, you're gonna come out with a slight chlorine taste. Um, if you have access, like I do, to an amazing well that, that has great water, you're set. If you don't have access to fresh spring water or well water, hey, this is this is when it's worth going to spend the money on reverse osmosis water, uh, distilled water, spring water, something you can get you know from any you know drugstore, Walmart, any big box store, uh, because you you want a very clean tasting water. You want any flavors from your water tainting your finished product. A couple other things that you want to keep in mind. We're going to do a couple samples here. I'm going to show you guys the difference and how to correctly proof your alcohol. This is fresh spring water or fresh well water from my well. Now I've had this sitting right next to my aerating alcohol uh, since yesterday. So the temperature is equalized. This jar I just pulled out of my well, so it's only about 65 degrees. It is extremely important when you decide to proof that your water and your alcohol that you're going to proof down is the same temperature. If not, it's going to get very cloudy. The other thing that is very important is you're going to want to add your water to your alcohol. So the first jar we're going to do here is we are going to take, and like I said, I'm going to mix this about 50-50, which will come out a little bit hotter than I like, but since I'm going to age it, it'll, it'll come out okay. So I'm going to put 400 milliliters of my 175 proof alcohol. I'm going to take my water. And again, this is the water that is the same temperature as this alcohol. It's been setting uh, overnight for the temperature to equalize. You don't want to just dump it in really fast. I'm going to kind of go and nice and slow. I like using the mason jars with the little measuring marks. I went just a little bit over, but that's okay. I'm going to set this one right here to the side. All right. Just 
next jar that we're going to do, I'm going to add 400 milliliters of water. And now I'm going to do alcohol to water. Remember, you always want to add your water to your alcohol. You do not want to add alcohol to water. So we're going to do the same process. Add this nice and slow. Same process, 800 milliliters. Now this is probably the most important part of tempering or proofing your alcohol down, is ensuring that your water and your alcohol is the same temperature. So we're going to go with the same process as the first jar. I just overfilled it by about 400 milliliters of alcohol. And now I'm going to take this water, which I said came straight out of my well. It's only about 65 degree water. It's about 85 degrees out here right now. Add it nice and slow. I'll show you guys something. You see this jar is nice and clear. Not quite as clear and this jar is just a little bit cloudy. The different temperatures will create your will cause your product to be more cloudy. These are all actually came out pretty good. Alright. Uh, I had that jar sitting there for a little while, so I think the temperature warmed up a little bit. If you come out with a product that's a little bit cloudy, after you proof it down, you're like, oh no, this is really, really cloudy. As long as your finished alcohol was nice and clear, um, and you didn't get into your, it wasn't cloudy because you got into your tail, uh, which I'll go into in a different video. Say, say, Say this jar was really cloudy, you can take a fish tank aerator and bubbler, put it down in there for just an hour or two, or just leave it open to the atmosphere, and it's going to clear up. Like you can already see, this one's already just, just in the couple seconds I've dropped it in, it's went from a little bit cloudy to crystal clear. And you can see all these jars, if you have one that's just a little bit cloudy, it's just going to burn off. It's, it's going to cause everything to mix thoroughly. Uh, and you're going to come out really, really clear. Now you can see this jar is still not as clear. And this was the jar that we mixed. And we added our alcohol to the water instead of the water to the alcohol. It's still not nearly as clear as either one of the jars that we mixed the... Uh, added the water to the alcohol like we should and it doesn't take if it's already clear adding that aerator to it is going to clear it up just almost instantly so now I have my jars let me grab a lid here real quick See, by shaking the bubbles, you've seen people shake the bubbles. All that does is the faster the bubbles evaporate, 
the better your product. Uh-oh. It just got cloudy when I tried to shake it. And this was the first jar I did. That will happen. Most of those are microscopic bubbles. Don't freak out. You can see it's already starting to clear up. If you got friends over and need it clear a little bit faster, just drop that fish tank aerator in there. Give it just a minute. It's gonna mix up. And now, just like magic, you can see this start to clear and it's gonna turn right back crystal clear. And you're not gonna have any issues. So now let's see how we did. I don't like wide mouth jars because they tend to spill a lot. So I like using my glass measuring cup here. Almost dead on what I wanted. Just under a hundred proof, maybe right about 97, 98 proof. Uh, and in my personal opinion, that is exactly where you want your alcohol to be for drinking. So all three of these quarts now, they actually behave pretty well. I was hoping to get one of these quarts to cloud up uh, pretty bad. If you use good water and you make good cuts, proofing your alcohol down is not going to be a huge issue. Uh, even if you do have a little bit that's similar temperature or either way you do it, using the stone will fix it. If you do proof it down, it becomes cloudy. You can use that aerator and that little fish tank bubbler. It's going to clear everything up. It's going to come out just right. So now I've got three jars right here. Time to add some uh, maple, oak, and pecan chips to them and let them set for a little while and see how they come out. I'll give you guys an update. Thank you so much. Make sure and uh, subscribe and like our channel. I have a lot more really awesome things coming up here in the next couple months. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Leave me some feedback. Let me know what you think.